The sparkling rivers of Wisconsin provide more than natural beauty and recreation. They also serve as a source of clean, renewable energy for our homes and businesses. The power of water has long been put to work in Wisconsin. In fact, the world's first hydroelectric plant was built in 1882 on the Fox River in Appleton. Today, Excel Energy operates 19 hydroelectric plants on eight rivers in Wisconsin, with a generating capacity of 265 megawatts. Collectively, these plants avoid carbon dioxide emissions equal to the output of more than 83,000 cars. Most of Excel Energy's hydro plants are operated out of a central control room here at the Wissota Hydro Plant near Chippewa Falls. By the time the Chippewa River arrives here, it is carrying the drainage of 5,600 square miles, nearly 20 billion cubic feet of water. When it was built a century ago, the dam was considered the largest earthen dam in the world, measuring 67 feet high and 4,390 feet long. The dam and the lake it created became part of the area's economy and were nicknamed the Niagara of the Northwest. Today, Wissota Hydro is the most productive of our Wisconsin hydro plants. It has four 6,000 kilowatt and two 7,770 kilowatt generators. Together, they produce approximately 40 megawatts of daily peaking power for our customers, which is enough electricity to supply between 25 and 30,000 homes. Like all hydroelectric power plants, Wissota Hydro harnesses the energy of falling water to make electricity. A dam backs up the water, creating a deep reservoir and a higher fall of water. In other words, the reservoir is a form of stored energy. The water falls through large pipes, called penstocks, inside the dam, turning the blades of huge turbines, which spin generators to create electricity. A transformer increases the voltage to send electricity out onto the power grid. The Wissota plant was built by the Wisconsin-Minnesota Light and Power Company a century ago for $5 million. That was for the dam, the power station, and the transmission lines that sent the electricity west to St. Paul. The company hired 700 workers for the project. It built an entire town to house them on site, complete with a sewage system, steam heat, and electricity. There were bunkhouses for laborers, bungalows for engineers and foremen with families, a six-bed hospital, a pharmacy, a school, and a dining hall that could seat 350 at a time. Meals were served on China, with a waiter for every 12 persons. There was a rule that every worker had to take a bath at least once a week. The workers built a new spur track from the main line to deliver supplies by rail. They rerouted several existing rail lines and highways and rebuilt six bridges. A large concrete plant on the South Bank churned out the 90,000 cubic yards of concrete needed for the dam, powerhouse, core wall, and other buildings. Cable was strung across the riverbed. Boiler houses, drill sheds, machine and repair shops sprang up. The site was a hive of activity, with immense piles of lumber and steel bars, and dredges and steam shovels, derricks and drills, conveyor belts and locomotives all humming away. Workers drilled into granite and excavated thousands of yards of rock and gravel. Earthen fill was scooped up and transferred to the 3,380-foot-long embankment and packed around a concrete core wall reinforced with steel rods. The work took 18 months to complete. From November 1915 to May 1917, just one month after America entered the First World War. To this day, Wissota Hydro has the largest automatic spillway in the world, 910 feet across. The difference in elevation between Lake Wissota and the tailwater immediately below the powerhouse is 57 feet. The dam has an ingeniously simple mechanism for controlling water flow that requires minimal maintenance. Its 13 gates operate on water pressure alone. No wiring, motors, gears, or electricity. 
When the lake level rises above normal full pool elevation, the gates automatically tip in response to the increase in water pressure. The higher the elevation of the lake, the more the gates tip. As lake elevation recedes back to normal, the gates slowly tip back to close again. As with all hydroelectric dams, with sodas rapidly changing water levels can be dangerous. To stay safe, people are urged to keep clear, use common sense, and obey all warning sirens, signs, and barriers. Construction of the dam created the 6,300-acre Lake Wissota at the confluence of the Chippewa and Yellow Rivers and Paint Creek. In the century since then, Lake Wissota has become a regional attraction for visitors and residents alike, a recreational and economic asset. Wrapped around the northeastern side of the lake is Lake Wissota State Park. It's over 1,000 acres in size, featuring campsites, miles of trails, and a 285-foot beach. Boating, water skiing, sailing, and fishing are popular in the summer months. Winter activities include cross-country skiing and snowshoeing, ice fishing, and snowmobiling. On the south side of the lake, on land donated by XL Energy in 2007, is Ray's Beach. Shallow water and a sandy beach make it a popular spot for families. Thanks to a walkway constructed over railroad tracks and through woods, Ray's Beach is also handicap accessible. The entire area benefits from the economic impact of Lake Wissota year-round. In 2016, the county saw nearly $84 million in direct visitor spending. Good for the economy and good for the environment. The Wissota Hydroelectric Plant and surrounding communities have a lot to celebrate. 100 years old and going strong.